My name is Efim Svirsky. This film is about spiritual and emotional growth that is available to everyone through experiencing God's presence and love. While training as a therapist, I found this approach to be extremely effective for overcoming challenges and emotional development. Two main points. The two main points that Rabbi Svirsky adds is that first of all, he does this under in a state of relaxation, in which case he's dealing directly with your subconscious mind. And the second unique thing that Rabbi Svirsky does is he brings in God into the picture in a very strong way. And what that does is it brings a sort of a power to the session that simply could never be replicated by any other form of therapy. An atheist comes to a rabbi and says, Rabbi, I don't believe in God. And the rabbi says, so what? I also don't believe in God. An atheist is very surprised. He says, Rabbi, how can you not believe in God? After all, it's your profession. The rabbi says, ha, the God you don't believe in, I also don't believe in. Science neither proves nor disproves the existence of God. It cannot measure something beyond time and space, but it does give us an interesting metaphor. 100 years ago, Einstein proposed a unified field theory. A theory that would explain how everything is created and animated by a single source of energy. For Jews, this universal force that creates and maintains everything is manifestation of God. In Hebrew, Hashem. When it comes to feeling, Hashem manifests in our lives in all positive emotions. For example, love. The love that we feel towards others and ourselves. The love that others feel towards us. And other positive emotions, such as kindness, feeling of harmony. When Adam was created, he was put in a garden of Eden. The Creator asked him not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Adam eats, becomes ashamed, and hides. Torah writes, the voice of God travels through the garden and asks, Adam, where are you? God doesn't know where Adam is. Why he is asking? One explanation is that as if God tells Adam, Adam, I give you free will. How are you using it? You want to hide from me? Then I have to create an imaginary space where you can hide. But for you, it will feel very real. You will not be able to see me. You are not going to experience my presence. Since Adam represents humanity, the story is about us today. God is here and now. If we don't feel his presence and love, it is not because God is hiding, it's because we are hiding. On another hand, all negative emotions are coming from feeling that we're lacking something, not enough of something. For example, if we don't feel enough love, we feel unloved and hurt. If we don't feel enough security, we feel insecure. When we feel negative emotions, it means that we're not connecting to infinity, because in infinity, there is no lacking. In mathematics, we see that infinite minus any number still infinite, which means that Hashem, a creator, He gives us infinite attention, infinite love, and it doesn't take away from anybody else. The world is ultimately a very good place. It's a place of me and God. And if we can create balance in this world, the world is going to be beautiful because it was created that way. Another view is that the world is basically a scary place. It's a dangerous place. But if you are smart enough, if you are pretty enough, or if you are connected enough, you can manipulate the world. 
And then what happens is people learn to become manipulators. And they can be successful. But they miss the point, which is to become a lover. The therapy that I do is based on this understanding. We can either hide from God or we can have a mutual loving relationship with God. It all depends on our choice and knowing how to do it. When I begin a therapy session, the first thing I do is to help a person connect with this feeling of God's love as a spiritual resource. Imagine that the person who loves you gives you a flower. You appreciate the beauty of the flower, but you also feel the love of the giver. Now, imagine the gift of a whole field of flowers. The infinite being gives you, the universe, and all the beauty it contains as a gift. What do you feel when you experience beauty? Serenity, gratitude, wonder. All these feelings are manifestations of Hashem's presence inside of you, right here, right now. The ultimate power in this world is God. And if you can really channel God into your life, anything's possible. The understanding is, is that everything we go through in our life is for a purpose and for, for the good. It can be extremely painful sometimes, but there's, there is a bigger picture. It's just relaxation goes up through your arms and to the shoulders. Now, let this feeling go through your body and see if, you know, there's the parts of you really love it. As you said, it's just right there and there's the parts love it and just melt into this most pleasant feeling, the, the light goes through very easily, very nicely. And there's a part in your body that it's kind of resisting, it's just as they don't... Is it's right it? here, it's my shoulder. Shoulder, uh -huh. Yeah. okay. It hurts. Mm -hmm. And it's radiating all the way up to my ear, and I think it's what's causing my neck pain. When I begin working with a fame, it's usually dealing with a part that's in a dark and negative place. If you were in a, a war and you were hiding from the bullets, it was that kind of a feeling. Ask it, what's the emotion that causes the pain? So it's just saying, what's the feeling, what's the emotion that causes the pain? Fear for a change. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so ask, what's the fear of? I don't know, it's all crouched down. Okay. It's like crouched down, hiding from something. It's crouched down, hiding from something. Can, can you show me how it's crouching down? You know, like behind, you know, if you're like uh -huh, curled uh -huh. up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like just, hiding behind something. Uh -huh. Just go there. Just just do that. Just just do what you just did. Do it. Uh, what the fear is saying. I think it's more like shame. So ask the shame. What do you what do you feel ashamed of? It kind of is a fear of like having not done what I'm supposed to do or reached my, you know, kind of let let people down, mm -hmm. let myself down. Like I'm fighting because I don't want to really be seen, if you know what I'm saying. It's seen. You you don't want to be right. seen? Is that current feeling? Is it an old feeling? Is it some, how old do you feel? Is it just feeling kind of? I think it's current, but it's being, um, it's coming from, you know, Old, older stuff? I don't know how old. What happens if you don't hide, right? If you open yourself up, what would happen? I don't know. It doesn't really want to say. <laughs> okay. Well, so where's the part that's resisting? Where's the part inside of you that asks that doesn't want you to hear the answer? That's, that's, so ask, where in the body? Uh huh. Right there. So as this part, why don't you want me to hear the answer? What will happen if I hear the answer? I'll be like a loser or something. 
I'll be like a loser. loser. Yeah. Or a hypocrite. I think this part thinks I'm a loser. Uh, but it puts a lot of effort into like making sure no one else finds out. I think it's a part, I don't know, maybe from high school time, school days. It's, it's like this part, that's who I am. Right. Scared, sort of uh -huh. wimpy, like, I don't know, self-conscious. Right, okay, and here. Okay, so let's go back there. Let's just let's go back into your high school. Oh, I have to. <laughs> well, right. Not my favorite place to go. <laughs> All right, I understand. Uh, I yes. School. Okay. There's so much suffering. Okay. Hmm. All right. So let's go back with this with this fear. Let's go back to your your high school. No, no, I'm just gonna count from five down to one. Gonna be there. Five. Let's go back there. Four. Three. Two. One. Where do you see yourself? I'm sitting in AP history class. I was I was in all these advanced placement classes. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, I think I'm taking a test. Uh huh. Uh huh. And, um, yes, I, and it's not going well. So what do you feel? Like a fake mm -hmm. and like, what the heck am I doing here? And then I'm in physics. Mm -hmm. I was in physics. Oh my gosh. What a disaster. <laughs> so what I like to do is I want you to picture, imagine that you yourself is going to this girl. Uh -huh. What would you like to say to her? Give her a hug. There's life after high school. Mm -hmm. There's life after a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I tell you. Yeah. And that I, I should mm -hmm. embrace my uniqueness and not be running from it. Okay. Give this girl Hashem's love right now. Again, that's, now, now we're going to go back to physics, right? Mm -hmm. And Hashem loves you and loves you the way you are because He made you unique. How the neck feels right now? Neck's much better, right. but there's still pain out here. Uh huh. Okay, so ask the pain there on the side. Say, why are you there? I think it's a lot of anger. Anger? Mm -hmm. Yes. So give anger a voice. What does anger would like to say? I think it's angry at God. Okay, so God is here, so tell him. Let this part speak to God and tell God, I'm angry with you. I guess I'm really angry that he gave me such a complicated personality and such intense desire for spirituality and right. Torah. Yes. And then he stuck me mm -hmm. in such a place that was so far from it. Let the anger speak. You know, I'm not good at that. <laughs> You're not good at... Yes, I know. <laughs> but... Nevertheless, you know, we well, know you're a nice person, but let the anger speak. What the anger wants to say? That he had a chutzpah putting me in such a situation. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then not showing himself to me earlier. Now it shifted to here. Uh huh. So see what's, what's there. <sighs> what's the feeling is there? It's like um, hurts. Hurts, yeah. And it's like circular pain. Yeah, yeah. It feels like a tube. Ask what's the emotion, what's the feeling that creates this tube and the pain? Despair. So then why are you holding on to the despair? I don't know. Ask? Because it's old and comfortable. <laughs> it's interesting. Despair is old and comfortable, right? It's a nice feeling. It's a great escape. Uh -huh. so how do you escape into despair? Give up. Did Stop you? trying. It's like sort of a nice, dark, warm place you can go to. Mm -hmm. Not have to deal with anything. Uh huh. Okay. So go there. Well, that's going back to where I was in the beginning. How does it feel? You know, dark. Mm -hmm. Safe, sort of. Mm -hmm. it's quite safe. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of room. No responsibility. Mm -hmm. Don't have to try. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Any negative side effects? From it? it gets pretty darn boring. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Uh -huh. It's not going anywhere. Right. It's very monotonous. Right. Not a place I'd want to hang out for for a very long time. It's nice to go there sometimes. So this this part of you looking for safety is that what it's looking for? Yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. Safety. Mm -hmm. Easy way out. Mm -hmm. It says that the the righteous person he runs he runs into Hashem when he you know feels threatened, right? Right. 
Uh-huh. And I think I do that now. I think I think part of this is I'm ready to let this go. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. I so, don't I don't get to the, you know. Uh-huh. I feel, m- m- you know, much more connected in all the time. Right. So I don't really get to that state anymore. Yeah. So you just you can replace it with something much better, right? You right. Know? And then, by the way, that's a lot of time people go into even depression also. For well, that's it. I, it was depression for me. I got. I yeah. Had, yeah. Yeah. I had a tendency right. to get. That's right, that's right, that's right. That's, that's, Which is uh, my personal, you know. Quote unquote safe place, right? Yeah, so for sure. You can get passive. That's, yeah, that's right. Isn't that what depression is about? Passive anger? Yeah, yeah. And so tell this, mm-hmm, girls, this, I have a better place for you to go to, right? Tell this part that says, if you want me to feel safe, I can offer you really nice, safe place, very healthy, safe place, right? They listen, I found out that not only Hashem exists, He's right here, right now, He loves you, but He loves you unconditionally. Back then it was all about fear and punishment. Uh, yeah, so. I wish I knew it then. Yeah, so go back there. And what do you feel? Now that this part is with me, mm. I feel relieved. So let's transform this part, right? You know, you don't need despair anymore, right? Do you? No. no tell this part, so I don't need the despair anymore. I don't I can, need despair anymore. You want me to feel safe? Feel right. safe. Let me go into this nice, beautiful place where I go with Hashem and feel His love, right? It's a good place to go to. It's turning into something. Yeah. Tell me what To it's a bird. Very powerful little bird. That's there when I'm feeling tense, when I'm thinking that I run the show and that it's all in my hands and I'm going to fail or I'm going to get uptight about something. Um, this bird, this little bird comes and brings God's presence into it. It's an anchor. I think for a lot of my life, I watched my life happening. I'd be with my kids and always be somewhere else at the same time. And through the work I've done with the female, this feeling has completely disappeared. And I'm extremely grateful for that. Sometimes I'll be in a moment and I'll be like, I'll stop myself and be like, wow, I'm like in it. I'm not thinking about why I should be in it or why I'm not. I'm just there. We're not trying to get rid of any parts of ourselves. Let's say you have a part which is angry. But why is it angry? Because underneath it, it's hurt or it's sad. And then you find out that this part represents a small child which is upset or hurt, would you hurt or scream or hate the child? No, that will be abuse. The same thing when it comes to inner child. So instead of it, we embrace this part. We talk nicely to this part. We calm it down. And then it will turn around and start functioning properly. Another group, another day. When I was 29, I had a near-death experience. They say that you see your life flash before your eyes, but it wasn't so much my life, but rather I could see all the decisions that I'd made. I don't know what drove me to be in that situation, but I realized that I'd been lost, that I had lost touch of who I was for a long time. It's a very heavy feeling. It's a very heavy feeling. Uh, what's the emotion that is make it so heavy? Humiliation. How old are you? Eleven. All right, so be there. Be there in your room at that time. Good. And the picture imagine that you, yourself, right now, your age, going to this boy. What would you like to say to him? You know, I would like to uh, impart on my child that none of this is of any reflection of him. Tell him. (laughs) I just don't see how an 11 year old can understand that. Oh, you will be surprised. Tell him, say, I I have a great present for you. I have a great present for you. Tell him, I found out that not only God exists, not only Hashem exists, But he's right here, right now, and he loves you. And he loves you. Tell him, I can feel his love. I can feel his love. And I want to give it to you. I want to give it to you. 
And just feel, feel this love yourself. And how he is responding. He's calm and he's filled with a bit of wonder. I guess I would say that it was like going into a time machine. What we're doing is we're sending person back to his own childhood. Then we're asking person to really enter into the child, so to feel how the child feels. And then we're sending an adult part to this child to explain from the adult point of view what really happened and change the perception of the situation so the past can really become a past and not the present. Right, so God is, is the underlying background with, and context in which everything occurs. Meaning, I would not, norm not normally have the guts to do many of the things I am being asked to do in a session, if not for having the preliminary focus that God is both here in the session with us, and God is, God is also there in that moment, and He is unconditionally loving me, and that really sets the stage for me to be able to then do whatever I have to do. There's, there's an emptiness mm -hmm. and just a black hole where, where my father's supposed to be. And I feel unworthy of his time and his attention. When you seeing this scene, is there a particular age that comes to your mind, or is that number of ages? It's just a recurring image from as far as back as I can remember. So picture, imagine your dad. Just picture, imagine your dad right there, right? So just, just tell them what you feel. Say, Dad, I feel. I feel like every moment I'm talking to you, I'm wasting your time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like I don't deserve any amount of your attention. Mm -hmm. I feel guilty even standing here right now. Obviously, the way I am right now is not worthy. So. I'll become worthy. I'll become somebody that you're willing to talk to, or that you're proud of at least. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what your dad says to that? I'm proud of you already. He says I should be better at Telling you more consistently that I love you. She said, I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. She says, I don't, didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. Is that? It's that simple? Yes. Sometimes it is. It, what's very interesting is that you can find me you know, cracking up laughing in the middle of this meditation. And I'll give you an example. He, he had me focus on what benefit do I get from blaming. And from that place, it was actually my, my mind went blank. I could not think of any reason why I would have to blame someone. And he pointed out quite simply that not blaming includes not blaming myself. I think that we just get down to things and he gets to the root of things so quickly and so deeply and it's not and he gets to the essence of it which at the end of the day is very much about our spiritual growth and where we're supposed to go so um, that's very very powerful because a lot of times we go back to certain thoughts or certain things that trigger th reactions in us so he's able to sort of re rewire from a very deep place um, what's what the where the problems coming from and then you can just move on and get to the next thing
when we have to make a decision, usually everybody have at least two voices. One voice says, do, go. Another voice says, don't do, don't go, stop. And there is me who has to decide which voice in my head is the right voice and which voice is not the right voice. What we find out, then we learn to focus on Hashem's presence and we feel harmony. When the voice that comes from my essence, the energy flows very, very nicely. We feel in harmony with ourselves, we feel in harmony with divinity. When the voice comes from the tense, dark, twisted place, this is a voice of fear, this is the voice of our negative part of ourselves. Ability to distinguish helps us in many, many decisions. You know, normal pregnancy, everything's going okay. And near the end of the pregnancy, I didn't feel the baby moving so much. And the doctor's telling me, everything's fine, don't worry, you're over anxious. And I work with a theme at connecting to the baby. And I said, you know what, baby? Tell me if you gotta come out. And I was out to dinner with relatives, and all of a sudden, I got that message. And I said, there's something wrong, and we are going to the hospital now. I mean, within half an hour emergency C-section, they told me if I'd gotten there one hour later, that baby most likely wouldn't have made it. Когда ко мне приходили уже люди там пенсионного возраста, разных возрастов и боялись, потому что закончили свое художественное образование в пятом классе, мы делали медитации. Те медитации, которым я научилась у Ефима, они очень многим людям помогли э, вот этому их внутреннему ребенку выйти наружу и делать постепенно замечательные работы. I think that God is the ultimate creator, and all we can do in this life is um, bring some of that creativity through us into the world. So when I'm painting most effectively or the best is the time when I'm most out of control and I'm not on top. You know what I mean? It's that edge you walk between total chaos and, and just pulling it off, which is letting go is very much being part of God. You know, we don't control the world, God does. Always remember this experience. Hashem is right here, right now. Hashem loves me. Remember these words. You can use your own words, but your mind will take you back to this place. This is home.